Is there more to structure besides the classroom space? Well, yes, if you think about it. You can give structure to almost anything. As the folk, well, for some people, it's not natural. But for them, as for the persons with autism, you'll want to give them this system. As the folks at Division Teach at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill explain it, structuring the physical environment or space, then also the materials in the environment and time should all be organized and made understandable for the student with autism. That's a research-based procedure. In the process of structuring these three components, the teacher will find her own behaviors become more logical and organized too. Can't help it. If something in the context changes, other things will have to change. That's a rule of behavior. Organizing materials doesn't just mean having the materials ready to be used. It also means having the materials located and labeled so that the student can independently retrieve them when needed. The goal is for the student to need less help from others, including you, just like his typical peers. Keep the materials in the location in which the student is likely to use them. Make sure they're labeled and at the end of the day replenish supplies where needed. Some of the tasks you ask the students to do will require a jig to be included with the materials. A jig is just another word for a picture of the steps of the task and the completed task. Make sure there's a place to put finished work. Yeah. The Teach Independent Work System is, like I said before, an evidence-based procedure for moving the student toward an independent adult life. We'll be going into this procedure in depth in our Core Principles Seminar. I do need to say, by the way, if you're not naturally organized, I hope you work with someone who is so that the two of you can team and use the strengths of each. The student will need to know the order in which to do his work. So put that in his daily visual schedule or in a task schedule at his workstation desk. This will allow the student to read the schedule instead of being verbally prompted all the time. This is a beginning uh, literacy skill. Be sure to include a symbol for what the student needs to do when all the tasks in the list are finished. It lets him know, move on. The ending symbol shows the student that he's completed the amount of work you wanted him to do. You can use the list of work tasks as a natural mechanism for keeping the student motivated by using something called the Premax scheduling. In this evidence-based procedure, you set up the order of tasks by putting a preferred task first. The second task can be a non-preferred or disliked task, followed next by a preferred task, and so on and so forth, always ending the list with a preferred task. You know your student well, so make sure a really disliked task is always followed immediately by a truly enjoyed task. Reinforcement is built in. Ta-da! <laughs> All of the visuals representing events that you provided for the student show him the flow of time in a concrete way. While the flow of events is enough information for many students, you may wish to provide the academically able student some type of clock symbol when an event must occur at a particular time, like lunch is always at a particular time or music is at a particular time. You can use an analog clock symbol or digital clock symbol if you wish, doesn't matter. For a small group of students who are extremely literal and rigid, however, giving an exact time for an event may end up causing distress when there's a delay or the classroom clock, God forbid, doesn't match the school bells. I've had this happen. <laughs> for those students, some additional instruction in the form of social narratives can help him learn some real life flexibility. <laughs> 